Okay guys, this is a wiring harness video uh, for the 2015 Honda Fit uh, EX. I'm installing uh, the trailer lighting uh, unit that I got from eTrailer.com and it's uh, I'm only about 20 minutes into the uh, project and it's going pretty smoothly so far, knock on wood. Uh, I've already installed the unit, stuck it to the back here. It's in that corner, very tucked away nice and neatly. I've already removed the tape which goes out to the tail light, which these are the wires I'm going to have to tap in and uh, back pro with the uh, tester that came with the kit to see which wires which for brake lights, turn signals, running lamps, things of that nature. Here are the wires right here that I'm going to go from the unit that I'm going to go tap into here. And then the long green wire underneath here is going to run across the uh, this channel here and then up to the other side for the uh, right turn signal. It's held in by, uh, the molding at least, it's held in by a few clips. One, two, three, and four. Uh, that is pretty much all that is holding that in. You do need to remove part of the door uh, rubber gasket, uh, ceiling gasket, in order to uh, peel it away. And you don't need to remove the whole thing from the car, thankfully. And for those that are interested, the power wire, I had basically zip tied to the existing uh, wire uh, harness that goes from the bottom here all the way across up into the front. Again, some disassembly is required, but it's not too difficult. And once you've run the wire up here, I will then attach it to the auxiliary fuse panel with a 15 amp fuse. And let's see how well I can get it. I've already got a couple out of fuses in there already. Uh, so the one on your right is for the heated side mirrors. The one on the left is for my camera, uh, dash camera to be exact. So I'll just find another spare one that's available and put another ADA fuse in for the trailer light kit. And for those that are interested in the wiring here, we have uh, the turn signal, which the turn signal is pretty straightforward on the unit. It is a yellow wire uh, for the left turn signal, so it is a yellow wire on the Honda Fit. Uh, for the uh, brake lights and running lamps, uh, the running lamps is... I'm going to focus in on the, the running lamps is the gray one and the green one is the brake lights. So running lamps, brake lights, and then black is the ground. Well, the final color code is on the Honda Fit stock wiring harness. The gray wire is the running lamps, tail lights. Uh, the green wire is the brake lights and the yellow wire is the left turn light. And then I added that green wire, which is the brown wire on the Honda Fit for the reverse lights. And then I have to still do the long wire for the right turn signal. For the brake control wires that have to be routed from the back here all the way up to the engine bay, uh, I was careful enough to route the wires up against the frame here. The blue wire is the ground and I worked around uh, away from the suspension and uh, wire tied it out of the way. I also removed four clips from the driver's side of the under panel here and uh, snuck the wire on top of it so it's out of the way, out of the elements. This does require you to remove the back wheel and then work your way forward and even removing the front wheel because you don't want the wire I don't know how long I'm going to be able to show you but uh, the wire will be right near the tie rod and the axle which you don't want it to interfere with that so you have to zip tie that out of the way as well. Finally the wire is this wire right here uh, it's coming up through the side here if you can see it it's up from the away from the suspension components and this is the wire that I have done here the black wire will go to the circuit breaker which I'll mount right here and uh, tape that out of the way so it doesn't ground out against anything and then run the wire to the positive terminal of the battery now the only other issue I need to do is to take this white wire and snake it into the cabin for the brake controller and luckily enough if you can see straight ahead that grommet is right uh, easy accessible and I've already started to uh, remove the electrical tape so I can get access to the uh, to the grommet. Now I'm underneath the dashboard here and that rubber grommet uh, is right past the steering column so it'll be very easy to uh, snake that white wire through to the brake controller which will probably be right next to the OBD2 um, uh, port over here and then as far as the brake light is concerned the Let's see how well I can get this here. I don't know if you could see it, but it's that white connector right ahead. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it. 
So one of those wires, either the blue with the gray stripe, gray, light green, or dark green, is going to be the wire that I need to tap into. I'll need to remove some of that tape and um, splice in the wire. And the brake controller, I will mount right here, uh, conveniently under the dash so I can get access to it. And that should complete this install. As you might be able to tell, I'm running low on daylight, so this is going to have to wait another day. And at least this final leg of the project for the brake controller, it doesn't look to be too uh, strenuous to snake the wires through. I'm going to use my coat hanger method that worked for the heated side mirrors and go from there. And here is the final installation of the brake controller from Kurt. I decided to install it on this side of... Uh, of the dashboard seeing that it was a lot easier than doing it over on this side which has a little bit of an uneven uh, curve to it so this was nice and flat and I had velcroed it so I didn't have to drill so it won't look like I just uh, destroyed the bottom of the of the dashboard and it was a little hard to get to the uh, brake wire it is actually the light green wire connected to the brake pedal and now I have it uh, fused at 30 amps uh, off the auxiliary uh, fuse panel by the way and uh, this is basically how it works. I mean, you got your in intensity, and then on the side here, you have your um, your time delay. Now, this is the manual override. Uh, it basically will access the uh, the brakes without the you pressing on the pedal. And if I press on the pedal, you can see my foot there. It turns on, no problem. Now, uh, the only other thing that I had to make an adjustment for is the wiring to make sure that it stays out of my way with the clutch. And uh, other than that, no other issues at all. The other cool part too is that when you hit the manual override, it actually turns on the brake lights in the back. And what I noticed was even when you're driving down the road, uh, you have uh, the effect on the engine is you press the manual override or if you were to push on the brake obviously but if you hit the manual override it actually uh, retards the engine to the point where the ignition actually slows your, you it uses the compression of the engine to slow yourself down so it's not like the engines gonna go and drag along with when you're uh, pressing on the brake pedal so I hope this uh, installation has been helpful to others I am working on I just ordered my uh, trailer it won't be uh, available for a few months that's actually being custom made for me and then a few months I will be able to show how this uh, will function. I'll probably get another dashboard camera and uh, put it onto the back window just to see how it uh, drives and I was able to test drive a 5x10 uh, roughly about 1200 pounds. It was definitely a little acceleration challenge but it hauled it no problem. You just got to be smart about what you're towing and uh, we'll uh, reconvene for when I have the trailer in hand. Till then, have a great uh, holiday and thanks for watching.